Three M hips. What'd you pay on those? Uh, European, I forget, but like uh, two ten chip. Dog. So I feel pretty good about what I just got then, because uh, so someone. So and the I, box was fucked. Yeah, I put a bid in on Stock X last night. For these? Yep. For two twenty five. Got accepted this morning. Two twenty five. Someone shipping them to me. Give me that. I was like, that. now you don't have to wait in line at Foot Locker at no, 6.30 in the yeah. morning. I don't have to worry about waiting in line. I'm not going to do it. I mean, nothing. All right, all right. So all the ideas break down. Dang, son. Check me out, dog. Check me out. Hand delivered, fool. I know. <laughs> Yo, what is going down, y'all? Welcome back to the most underrated sneaker channel on YouTube. Your words, not mine. Today, man, today is full of announcements, surprises, and it's gonna be a little bit different than the normal vlog format. As you can tell, I'm already sitting down. Normally, I do this at the end of the video. Where we go over the sneakers and blah, 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 blah. But today is where we make some changes, man. So let's get right into it. I'll lay it all out for you guys, and I'll explain everything and how this channel is gonna be moving forward. First things first, if you don't follow me on the gram or Snapchat or any social media, then you probably don't know, but my new job is at Certified Tattoo studios man I'm the creative director and social media manager for them it's an awesome spot for me and it's the largest tattoo shop in Colorado I'll be working directly with my homie Yeo who owns the spot he also tattoos as well obviously you guys know I can't draw for shit I don't tattoo that's not my thing but I will be managing all their social media I'll be hosting their daily Instagram story taking people around the shop showing you the coolest tattoos showing you what's going on on the daily I'll also be shooting and packaging all the promos and the content for their social media accounts so that's gonna be cool we're opening up a ice cream shop right next store called Besties Ice Cream. That'll be open here really, really soon. So I'll be doing all the stuff for that as well. Just a lot of things going on over there. A lot of stuff moving. Yale's the ultimate hustler, man. So it should be a lot of fun. For me personally, I feel like it's pointless to upload the same content on multiple platforms. You know, it just doesn't make sense. If I'm shooting promo videos for their stuff during the day, how am I really vlogging myself? What am I vlogging? Just me shooting their content? Like it just doesn't really make sense. So I think what makes the most sense is for me to still do vlogs on this channel here and there. We're gonna be doing a ton of traveling in 2018 all around the country. That includes different tattoo conventions, magic conventions, sneaker cons, all kinds of cool stuff. So those will still definitely be vlog worthy events, but I'm not sure the day to day life is really gonna be vlog worthy anymore because I'm gonna be trying to shoot so much other content and edit other content. It's just gonna be too much. So with all that being said, said, I'm still going to do sneaker stuff on this channel. I'm still going to shoot sneaker videos. It'll all just be sneaker related. So for the people that wanted quicker videos, you got it. It's going to be quick videos. It's going to be reviews. It's going to be real versus fake. It's going to be uh, maybe like the Yeezy Mafia video that we just did, like some conversation stuff like that. But the vlog portion of it won't be consistent. That'll kind of be special things for when I'm traveling or for when there's a ton of shit going on that I'm shooting. That's when I'll piece together a vlog for you guys. Now I know there's going to be a ton of people like, oh damn, we like the vlog style. We like hearing what you have to say on this or just hearing you crack jokes or talk shit about this or go to this place. I get it, but that's why I have a plan. In addition to the sneaker videos I'm putting on this channel, the periodic vlogs here and there, I am gonna be hosting a radio show or podcast, whatever you wanna call it, with the homie Dal Palantonio. We're gonna be doing that, me and Dallas, and that's gonna be coming three days a week. Where I think it's gonna be a morning show. I haven't really nailed it down for sure yet, but I think I wanna do a live morning show on YouTube, Monday, Wednesday, Friday to start out. Hopefully we'll go to five days. We'll go live for five down the road, but I think starting out three days a week, consistent, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you guys can count on it. You can come here at nine o'clock mountain time or whatever you know we decide on. Um, I'm thinking like maybe a nine to 11, 10 to noon, something like that, where we're gonna host a morning show three times a week. I wanna have it set up to where you you guys can interact with the show, whether that's Twitter or callers. I'm not exactly sure yet. We do have a room over at Certified that's going to be dedicated. We're going to set it up as a studio, so I'll be able to shoot sneaker reviews in there. We'll be able to host the radio show in there. It's going to look super sick. It's going to be just like a set. It's going to be really, really dope. So that is all coming, and that's what you can really expect from the future of this channel, man. It's going to be some vlogs here and there. It's going to be way more sneaker content because it's so much easier for me to shoot a review, talk some shit, upload the video, and bang, bang, without the whole vlog process and everything else that goes into an actual vlog, man, because it is a lot of work to make a vlog compelling and good. And that's what I'm all about, keeping the content good. I don't want to just do it to do it. So I think this is the best way to keep the sneaker content good, keep the vlog content good, and then still giving people what they want as far as content and subject matter and debate and arguing and topics for the morning show. That's what that's that's what that platform is going to be for. You know what I mean? Dallas and I will be breaking down the biggest stories in pop culture, sneakers, sports, 
that's kind of what that morning show will consist of. So I'm really, really excited about that. That allows me to use my radio background and do something that I really enjoy, which is radio, which is talking to people, which is uh, throwing out topics and throwing out debate and creating conversation. So that's really it, man. That's how this channel is going to be formatted in the future. That's how it's kind of going to go down. It's going to allow me to upload more content, more consistent content, and I'm going to have a little bit of something for everyone. With all that being said, man, let's get into these sneakers. We got them early, as you know, from the title of the video, and that is these right here, the Yeezy Beluga V2 2.0. These dropped this Saturday retail price of 220. These did come from a retailer, a direct retail store. I'm not gonna say who, I'm not gonna say where, cause I ain't trying to blow up my spot dog, but they did come directly from retail. So for everyone that's talking fakes and all this other bullshit, just relax on that dog. Actually, as I bring up fakes, let's get into the shoe. I wanna go over a couple things that need to be debunked, man, because it's already been debunked, but other people still are keep bringing it up and it's not true. So let's get into all this, man. There's the box label for you. Yeezy V2 right there, size 12. This is a US box label. As we saw with the other ones, the Euro box label looks like this. It's got all the different uh, sizing combos there. And then that's the US. So that's kind of the difference. This is the original Beluga V2 and then the 2.0. So we can kind of do a little comparison as well. Bang, there they are, man. Yeezy Beluga 350 V2 2.0. Look around the shoe. By now we pretty much all know the V2. I mean, same standard kind of silhouette. But as I was talking about fakes, what I do want to get into real quick and I want to touch on, a lot of people, I noticed in the last video with the Yeezy Mafia video, a ton of people when we were talking about Stormzy's pair and all this stuff, so many people were commenting about the space between here. That does not determine fakes, man. Look how big, look how, look how much spacing is between here. And then look at the stock photo on the website. Huge difference, right? Space between the tears we cry. And then now look again at my pair. The S is a lot farther away from the pull tab. This does not mean the shoe is fake. This is a size 12. This has been debunked a long time ago, but for some reason people still think this is the way to legit check a Yeezy V2. It's not. The Supply 350 writing is farther away from the pull tab, the bigger the shoe gets. So being that this is a size 12, size 13, they're gonna be way farther away from the pull tab. It's the same way on my breads. It's the same way on my zebras. That stock photo that you just saw is probably a size eight maybe nine. I've checked this with multiple pairs of shoes, multiple sizes, and that's just how it is. The homie Dallas got the same pair. We both got the same pair from the same spot, from the same retailer, and his is actually a lot closer to the pull tab because his is a size 10 and a half. And this is actually a picture of Dallas's pair that he had sent me. His is a lot closer to the pull tab than mine is, but it's still not as close as the stock photos. The stock photos are, like I said, it's probably a size eight. It's probably a really small shoe. And then you go back and look at mine, there's just a lot more space there, again, because this is a size 12. Now, if I'm looking at both shoes, the side that has the 350 closer to the pull tab is definitely a lot closer than the side that does not. So the right shoe where the 350 is closer to the pull tab, that, that gap is actually a lot smaller than the side where the Supply 350 so the S is farther away than the zero is on the 350 for sure. So everybody that thinks that is the way to legit check fakes, and I'm not calling anyone out, I'm just trying to educate you guys. Like this is not the way to legit check fakes. This space back here, now I will say if you get a size eight, a size nine, and it's this spaced out, yeah, then it's probably suspect. But on a smaller size shoe, this is gonna be a lot closer to here than it is on a bigger size shoe. So just be aware of that. Hopefully that helps you guys out. Hopefully we can put an end to all this nonsense about this being too close and they're fake and all this other stuff because it's just not true. Now, as far as these go, no real difference from the last V2s, the Zebras, the Breads, the Creams. I mean, no real difference other than the colorway. Everything else is pretty much the exact same. If we're comparing it to the V1s, this is a size 12 and a half. Like I said in the last video, very rare size, so I'm hanging on to it. But the first noticeable difference no pull tab obviously on the version 1 or on the 1.0 pull tab on the 2.0 that's really the main difference between the shoe as far as the silhouette goes that's really the only silhouette difference the heel is a little bit is tucked quite a bit tighter um, just like it is on any of them without the pull tab and this one it's a little bit wider a little bit wider of a build there not as tightly tucked also on the new one these stripes you can feel them and they are 3m 
on the inside. On the OG Belugas, they're not 3M and they're like painted onto this heel tab. They're not like laid over the top. It's not something you can feel. Like these ones, they almost feel like decals, like laid over. There's definitely, you can feel them there and they are 3M. Other than that, that's your real differences. Both have the same style of insole. This one has the black Adidas Easy writing on the inside. This one has the orange matching the orange on the outside and the orange dots on the pull tab. Same standard V2 prime knit as we've been seeing. Not super stretchy. Lacing system has got this nice suede on the inside. And then you've still got that plastic cage on the inside underneath your toes. I'm not a huge fan of that. I wish they would have just left it like the OG, like V1s, like the Pirate Blacks and stuff where it's just your toes against the prime knit. I've talked about that before and everything on the Zebra review. Just not a fan of that. But overall, man, out of the three colorways, this is definitely the one I wanted from the frozen yellow to these to the blue tints. I really like the blue tints as well. I know the frozen yellows are probably the most limited but that's just not the pair that I really wanted. This is definitely the one I wanted the most because you can just rock them with pretty much anything. And I loved the OG uh, Belugas so much that I just had to have the 2.0 for sure. From what I'm seeing as far as stock numbers, this should be one of the easiest Yeezys to cop, man. I know a ton of places are getting them. There's a ton of raffles. It just seems like more than any before, even more than the creams, which is crazy because the creams were the least limited until this release. Obviously they're Yeezys, they're still hard to get, but these are the easiest of the Yeezys to get. Pull the insole out, that way you can see the logo there. That's what it looks like. And then you've got the underside there. That's what that is looking like. As far as sizing goes on these, man, standard V2 sizing, I would definitely go up half a size from your normal size if you want to leave the insole in. For me, these are a size 12. I didn't want to wear a 13. They don't make 12 and a half locally. I'm sure you can get a 12 and a half from a Euro or somewhere like that. They're just way more limited and way harder to get. So I have a 12 in my Zebras. These also have a 12. I will have to take the insole out to be able to rock this shoe. They just don't fit. They're just too cramped. They fit, but they're too cramped in the toe. A lot of people are really weirded out by that. Like, oh, how do you rock the shoe with no insole? It's not like a standard shoe. If you've ever rocked a boost shoe, you know you can just take the insole out and it's not really that big of a difference. But definitely go a half size up. You can probably even get away with going a whole size up depending on your foot. I just didn't want a 13. A 13 just looks big on me, so I really wanted to keep it at a 12. So I'll just pull the insole and I'll be good. Same standard V2 lacing system. These are all gray laces on the OGs. You've got that kind of patterned lace there. These ones are a solid gray. As far as the comparison to the outsole, same exact design. This one is more of a tan colorway on the outsole, and then this is a gray, so they are definitely uh, different colors. Your OG is gonna be a little bit lighter than the gray here. Boost at the bottom boost window there. That is about it on these, man. There's really not a ton more to say that we don't already know. It's a standard Yeezy V2. With all that being said, man, I hope you guys enjoy how the channel is going to be formatted in the future. I'm sorry to any of you that are a little bit mad about the vlogs and stuff like that, but I think it'll be better for everybody, man. More content for you guys, more stuff for you to soak in, and just more avenues to absorb the content and more ways to go directly to the things you like instead of maybe watching through some stuff you're not a fan of just to get to the things you are a fan of. As always, thank you guys so much for rocking with me, man. Thank you for supporting the channel. I love the shit out of y'all, and I will see you fools tomorrow. Yeah! It's 5 a.m. and I can't sleep. Got too much on my mind and not enough time up in the damn week. And plus my plans keep me tossing in bed. I lie awake, cause soon body starts in my head. So I'm trying to figure out where am I headed from here. Promise moms I'll be on before the end of the year. And I'll make sure to keep my words. Every day I'm seen and heard. Pushing CDs from the city to the verbs. It's 5 a.m. Ain't no point in lying in there while I'm wide awake. So I get to it making music like my pride's at stake. And if I decide to take a day to chill, I maybe kill the buzz that we've been building up and have no way to pay my bills. So I'm like, fuck it, focus, figure a game plan Without a budget, hope it's slipping with the grains of sand Too much thinking is consuming me To close my eyes for half a day and miss an opportunity Leave no room for scrutiny, always put out something great Make sure that we prove that we the illest in this fucking state Pack shows to capacity, passing out our last CD Constantly we network till my neck hurts and my back is weak Still I have to go attack the streets to keep them watching us Prevent the haters from throwing shade at us, talking tough Only motivation left to feel it